about uh, pre-trip. Uh, pre-trip obviously is a part of our daily routine with uh, any commercial vehicle and a post-trip uh, to follow that at the end of the day. So um, without looking at the objectives, uh, a few obvious ones here. First off, to make sure the truck is roadworthy going down the highway. So we're making sure the lights are working, making sure it's mechanically ready to go. Um, cab should be spotless. So these are common sense objectives. We're not going to read all these, but the, 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 the main goal is to make sure that we have safe vehicles on the road. Okay? And if you ever find anything wrong with a truck that is a, an out of service situation, your job is to go in, communicate that with the management, and get, get a, a plan together to get that fixed. Okay? We talked about making sure that you have uh, uh, DEF, oil, uh, all fluids for the, the, the make model of the trucks that you currently have, the standard bulbs that you have, instead of waiting at two hours to go get a tail light replaced when you can change the bulb here and get your day going and be pr more productive, those types of, of items should be on site. Um, along with the relay fuses and all those things. The common things uh, that we know that we need to have on site. All the companies uh, that, that I deal with, uh, their drivers are uh, expected to do some of the minor maintenance. So listen, we don't touch brakes. You have to be a certified mechanic that adjusts brakes, all that. You know how to do it, we don't mess with that. But it comes to the bulbs, it comes to the fluid, it comes to changing some wipers. Um, if you, you know, you should be pretty comfortable on, on, on different types of services. There's the routine servicing, the scheduled preventive maintenance, and the unscheduled, which we cannot prevent. Every year there should be a sticker that goes on the trucks for the DOT, you know, right, annuals. So routine servicing, you know, the driver can do these things. That's fuel, the coolant, the oil, okay? That, that's quite obvious. And then uh, for the scheduled preventive maintenance, that's where you work with the management. That's why it's important to know the mileage that's going in there because Two things will cause a uh, true red flag for scheduled maintenance, preventive maintenance. One is uh, date. So even though we may not have stuck 10,000 miles on the vehicle, but if it's a truck that's been sitting for six months or, or, or a year, um, you still want to go ahead and get it back in for a PM. Here's the different levels uh, of uh, scheduled PMs, and your shop should know all this. And you should have an understanding of this, and I believe that you said that you have a consulting group that assist you with hey they're getting ready to build this is this right and is this is this <clears throat> there's a there should be a trifold brochure in each of your glove boxes that has the maintenance schedule for each of your vehicles moving right along here uh, so the unscheduled maintenance let's talk about if we do have a breakdown on the highway um, good reminder for us CDL drivers that we make sure that we got reflective triangles um, we don't use the fusey flares anymore. Um, they're not good, especially if you guys are having accidents and they weren't thinking, boom, they light the fusey flare and boom, we got a big fire going on. So on top of that, certain areas you light that, that fuse and we get a field fire going on. So we just kind of went away from them. Um, responsibilities as drivers, um, you have to detect and communicate what needs repaired. You just can't assume that somebody understands what you need. You've got it. You have to, um, you have to communicate that. Solid pre-trips are big. Um, that's where you and I avoid accidents before we pull away. And then we need to stop, especially especially on any commercial vehicle, on these flatbed trucks. 50 miles, the first hour, whatever comes within the first. You guys, if, if, you're, if, if you don't have any stops before that, stop and check those straps. Okay. I'm sure you guys do, right? Yep. Many times. And then 150 uh, miles or every three hours after that and or um, at each stop, you guys are checking those straps. And, and you guys remember in the mirrors every five to eight seconds. Uh, more of the driver awareness. Um, <laughs> pay attention to your senses. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. You ever had that? It's like, oh, I knew it. I shouldn't have done that. Go with on these big trucks. Go with that. If it doesn't feel right, get it looked into. You guys have any problems with wipers? That's an easy fix. If you got a wiper that's not right, stop and get one and get it on there. Okay. Um, same thing if you get a tire that's not wearing right. We got something that's out of balance, right? You guys are hauling some, some extreme weight, even though these commercial vehicles, the toe in, toe out, sometimes you get messed up. Sight, sound, smell, feel. If, if that's not normal, especially for the new truck you're driving, Bruce, uh, so keep, you know, the back brake keeps smoking a little bit, or you keep getting that hot brake smell, we got something that's not adjustment. Get to the shop, and let's get it looked at. Knowing the company policy, the maintenance policy, if you don't know what that is, make sure that you guys review that. 
Um, make sure that, that when you log back in, if Acme Shop has fixed the vibration in the front, you guys should have a report back that it's been fixed. And that has to somehow be initial or documented or signed by the, by the person who made the, the, the repair. That's a DOT law. Um, obviously the mechanic uh, has to be uh, responsible enough to make sure that uh, um, the, the repairs are made correctly. And if you, you get with a shop where it seems like the things aren't going right, management should make the decision to go find another shop. We don't ignore the ABS line. We don't ignore the check engine line. Just be, oh, it's always on. No, it's it's on because there's there's an electrical problem that why it's staying on, or we really have whatever it's warning of us, it, there's an issue. <laughs> um, we don't wait till our metal gets metal on our brake pads. It's no less than a quarter inch thickness on those pads, which is much weight as you guys are hauling. Uh, you guys start getting really close to that quarter inch, make sure that you guys are getting those brakes repaired. Make sure you're writing it up that you need some, some, brake, uh, some brake pads, brake shoes on there. Uh, tires, you know, we got a 4 30 seconds, 2 30 seconds. If you guys don't have a tire depth gauge, a penny will do it too. Clutches, um, your fleet currently, you guys have to worry about clutches at, at the fleet now? Except for one, one vehicle, They're up to all, everybody else is except for one truck. Okay. All right. You so just check the if you but if you have a clutch and it seems like it's slipping, go get it adjusted, and of course uh, mm -hmm. the engine, a lot of moving parts in there. But you can do a lot of things uh, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that we're preventing breakdowns. If you get a truck that's pulling hard left, hard right, we got something that's probably wrong with either brake out of alignment, um, or and or we have um, uh, maybe a steering component problem. Just don't don't ignore it. Uh, for the proper adjustments on the brakes, that's the, the CFR 396.25, and it tells about how the, how the, the mechanic's supposed to adjust the brakes, who can, who can adjust them and who can't. And then also we'll go back over all the air pressures tomorrow when we do the hands-on uh, uh, emergency brake check and, and of course your uh, uh, service brake check. Obviously load ratings um, and knowing what the tire's inflation is supposed to be on that too. So we can check the inflation, but we also have to make sure that we know that what the inflation is, what the tire pressure is supposed to be. More about the clutches. It sounds like we're kind of going away from those in these fleets, but obviously uh, one to two inches of free play at the top of the clutch pedal um, and make sure we're not overloading that clutch. More about the lifespan, make sure the correct gear for the clutch. Good thing about the automatics is it does all the progressive shifting for you, which is less wear and tear nice. on our vehicle.